Hello everyone, my name is Cao Yue Liu from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. The title of my talk is Brain Skill Facility Learning on Mobile Clients, a Supermodel Design with Durable Privacy. This is a joint work with my advisor Fan Wu from SGTU, my close collaborator Cao Jie Tang from UT Dallas, the experts Li Fenghua, Rong Fei Jia, Chen Fei Lü, and Zhi Hua Wu from Alibaba Group, as well as Hui Hai Chen from SJTU. I first introduce some background. Nowadays, more and more machine learning tasks are offloaded from the cloud to mobile devices, such as product recommendation, nest water prediction, and face recognition. The motivations behind this thread include good privacy, high customization and accuracy, as well as low latency. In this work, we consider how to enable resource-constrained mobile clients to train industrial strength deep learning models while keeping user data private. We take the largest online shopping platform in China, Taobao, for example. There are 1 billion mobile clients. The maximum range of app is 200 megabytes and there are two billion goods to be recommended. Federated learning proposed by Google is a potential solution to collaborative training. In each round, some eligible clients are chosen to download the full model and then upload the model updates after local training. The cloud server aggregates the model updates to update the global model. Google has deployed federated learning on its Android keyboard, called Gboard, to polish the language model. The model contains the embedding of 10,000 words, and the size is roughly 1.4 megabytes. However, in Taobao's context, the full recommendation model, which contains the embedding of 2 billion good IDs, is larger than 100 gigabytes. This makes federated learning infeasible. To improve efficiency, we propose a submodel framework. We observe that the input data of a client normally involves a small subspace of the full future space. Thus, the client often needs part of the full model that is related to its futures, called a submodel. In other words, after local training, only the submodel will be updated. We use Deep Interest Network, or DIN for short, as an example. DIN is deployed in Alibaba for recommendation and comprises embedding, attention, and fully collected layers. The embedding layer occupies more than 98% of the full model. The DIN submodel of a Taobao client contains the embedding vectors of its involved goods IDs and the other network layers. For example, if Bob's private data involves only GUS1, then he needs only the embedding vector of GUS1, while the other embedding vectors are redundant. Based on the concept of supermodel, he proposed a federated supermodel learning framework, which is quite efficient to distribute complex learning tasks on mobile clients. For example, a Taobao client's desired DIN supermodel is less than 1 megabyte. Further, if the supermodel degenerates to the full model, the federated supermodel learning will degenerate to conventional federated learning. Thus, our supermodel framework is more general. Just as every coin has two sides, the supermodel framework not only improves efficiency, but also brings in new price risk. First, the position of a client's desired supermodel in the full model, called the real index set, depends on the client's prior data. For example, the goods IDs in a top of client's data work as its real index set. To download a supermodel and to upload the update, the untrusted cloud server can know the client's real index set and reveal its prior data. This breaks the tablet of federated learning. To mitigate the price risk, we need to jointly solve two fundamental problems. The first problem is how to download a row of a matrix. 
without revealing the row index. Here, the matrix represents the machine modeling model. The second problem is how to modify a row without revealing the row index and the modification. We analyze two problems in detail. For the first problem, one true row method is to download the full matrix, like in factory learning, and then locally extract the row. However, it is completely unfollowable. Another method is oblivious transfer, which overprotects the matrix, because it also guarantees that the client doesn't load the other rows, which is not required in federated supermodel learning. The last method is price information retrieval and matches the price requirement. For the second problem, it is infeasible for clients to modify one by one. A feasible way is to firstly split up all the modifications without revealing any individual modification, and then apply the aggregate modification once. Such a primitive is called secure aggregation, and it works only if more than one client participates, and at least one of their modifications is non-zero. One extreme case is combined factory learning with secure aggregation or SFL for short. SFL lets all the chosen clients in one round be involved for each row of the full matrix. Thus, SFL provides the best privacy but the worst efficiency. Another extreme case is combined federated supermodel learning with the secure aggregation. In this case, a client will be involved only for the rows it truly intends to modify implying the best efficiency. However, the client cannot deny against its real index set, implying the worst privacy. In addition, given the desired supermodels of different kinds are highly misnamed, for a certain role, the chance is high that only one client is involved in the joint modification. For example, this probability is more than 80% in Taobao's context. The secure application will no longer work, and the client's real memberships of index will be revealed. By jointly considering two problems, we can find that SFL is the only existing solution, but incurs unaffordable overhead. In addition to the pricey problem, the supermodel framework also introduces new bios in federated allergen which is a default optimization algorithm of federated learning. Specifically, federated aging uses the size of a client's whole training set as a weight of the client's model update. Under the supermodel framework, for each index, federated aging will wrongly count in the weights of the clients with zero or low updates. To address the privacy and accuracy issues, while enjoying efficiency, we propose a secure federated supermodel learning screen with tunable property, or SFSL for short. First, at the same privacy level as the baseline SFL, our design greatly improves the utility. Further, our screen allows clients to improve utility by degrading privacy and can reach the extreme point with the best utility that is, federated supermodel learning with secure aggregation. Let's look at the design of SFSL. We first determine the scope of joint modification, thus align submodels, and making secure aggregation effective. The key constraint is that each client's real index set is private. In nature, the baseline SFL Usually use the full index set, that is, the position of the full model. In Taobao, the full index set is at the plain scale. To narrow down the scope, we observe that if all the clients chosen in one round of federated learning do not have some index, they upload zero updates through secure application. From the aggregated zero update, the untrusted cloud server can still infer that no chosen client 
has the index. Therefore, we can direct each index that doesn't belong to any chosen client is redundant. Based on this observation, our SFSL turns to using the union of a chosen client's real index sets, which is necessary and sufficient. Because the union is far smaller than the full index set, our design can improve efficiency without losing privacy. Also, the union is independent of the full index set. Our SFSL can relieve the dependency on the full model. Now, a new question is how each chosen client can obtain the union without revealing any individual client's real index set. In other words, we need a private set union protocol. Considering previous screens can only satisfy the accumulation setting of federated supermodel learning and high scalability, we propose a new private set union protocol using Bloom filter, secure application, randomization, and partition. Each chosen client first represents its real index set as a Bloom filter and then replace each bit 1 with a random integer while keeping each bit 0 unchanged. Such a randomization process is to hide the counter number of each index in the union. The randomized Bloom filters are securely aggregated under the mediation of the untrusted cloud server. From the aggregated Bloom filter, the cloud server can recover the union by doing membership tests of the full index set. Further, the cloud server can narrow down the test scope with partition technicals. Based on the union, each chosen client applies its randomized response to generate a randomized index set, which is used to replace and protect the real index set in the download and upload phases. Let's look at the process of randomized response. The class server asks, do you have a certain index? A client answers yes with two customized probabilities, conditioning on whether the index belongs to its real index set. The probability parameters allow the client to tune privacy and utility. The design above requires that a client participates only in one round of federated supermodel learning. When extended to the multi-round setting, we need to allow repeated responses to the answered indices. Our extension achieves longitudinal privacy by playing randomized response twice with one memorization step between. After addressing the privacy issue, we finally consider how to mitigate the bias in federated energy. We propose the federated supermodel energy. The key idea is to use the sizes of the index related training data rather than the size of the whole training set to weight the supermodel updates. Let's get into the evaluation part. We consider the click through rate prediction task with DI model. We used a one month top data set collected in last year. We implemented the prototype in Python and let each client use the same choice of probability parameters or CPP for short. We tested five different CPPs as shown in the table. As the serial number of CPP increases, the privacy of our SFSL becomes stronger. In particular, CPP1 is federated supermodel learning with secure application, while CPP5 is as secure as the baseline SFL. Our running environment is a Linux workstation. Let's overview the prototype. First, a client extracts its real goods IDs from local data and joins in private set union to obtain the union. Then, the client applies randomized response to generate randomized goods IDs, which are used to download the DI submodel and to upload the submodel update through secure application. The cloud server aggregates the supermodel updates with the federated supermodel origin and finally updates the global DI model. We next look at some major evaluation results. 
First is about the model accuracy and the convergency, compared with federated learning, which diverges in the end. Our SFSL greatly improves the best AUC roughly by 7.2%. Compared with ideal centralized training, the best AUC of our SFSL decreased by 2.5%. Second is about accumulation overhead. At the same price level as the baseline, our SFSL reduced roughly 80% of accumulation overhead on both sides of the client and the cloud server. Third is about computation overhead. We first look at the client side. Our SFSL with CPP5 reduces 85% of the computation overhead than the baseline SFL. Compared with CPP5, CPP2 can further reduce 91% of computation overhead just by degrading privacy. We next look at the cloud server's computation overhead. Our SFSL with CPP5 can reduce 45% of computation overhead than the baseline SFL. Last is about the job out of the clients. We can see that our SFSL and the private side union are quite robust. For example, even when the job out ratio reaches 20%, the time overhead of the cloud server in our private side union is less than 40 seconds. Finally, let's conclude the talk. We first proposed a supermodel framework for industrial strength learning tasks among mobile clients. We further proposed SFSL to address the new privacy and accuracy issues, which originated from data heterogeneity and the resulting supermodel differentiation. We finally validated our design of a Taobao dataset. Thanks for watching. Please refer to our paper for more details.